the main focus of this video is going to be about what happened on Raw um, and how things are shaping up for WrestleMania 32. But before I get into all that, uh, a couple of quick updates. Um, I will not be doing a pay-per-view review of Fastlane, uh, mainly because I can't muster the energy to care. <laughs> I'm not saying it was a bad show. I'm just saying it's like... Is there really enough material there for me to really do a full-fledged review of and for me to really, like, analyze? And I, at the end of the day, I decided I just didn't really care. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to forego the whole pay-per-view review there. Plus, I wanted to focus my energies on other things, like uh, getting the uh, WrestleMania Best of Worst series done. I actually... Now, now the plan is... For me to film uh, the Intercontinental title and tag team videos this weekend and have one of them, possibly both of them, up uh, by Sunday or Monday. The thing that might prevent that from happening is that tomorrow morning I'm actually having uh, surgery done. I'm And by surgery, I mean it's a dental procedure. It's not anything severe. I'm having my, wis my, uh, my wisdom teeth removed, all four of them. Uh, so that's going to be fun. Um, and, and the thing that really has me worried is that I don't know how long it's going to take me to recover from that. Uh, and if I'm like in a lot of pain, I'm not going to feel like talking. And if I don't feel like talking, I'm not going to be filming too many videos. So, um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, 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 hoping upon hope that I'll be better within two days and I'll be fine or at least well enough to be able to film videos. Uh, but we shall see. I, again, that's the part that has me the most worried about the whole thing. It's not the surgery itself. It's not um, any of that. It's just uh, how long is it going to take me to get better? Because if I'm, you know, if I'm in a shitload of pain for like a week and a half or two weeks, I'm going to be really upset. But, um, but in any case, uh, that's that's what I'm in store for uh, tomorrow morning. Um, so hopefully it doesn't impact uh, my filming schedule because I really want to knock out the. WrestleMania best to worst videos, and I did plan on doing the Intercontinental, uh, the Intercontinental title and tag team title videos um, this weekend. So hopefully I can get those to you. Uh, but be on the lookout for those. Um, uh, but yeah, this video is obviously going to be about what happened on Monday Night Raw. Um, couple big things that happened. I don't know if you've heard. Uh, it's a few. We're a few hours removed from the show. Um, but uh, Shane McMahon, Shane O'Mac made his grand return to WWE programming at the start of the show uh, during the presentation of the Vincent uh, J. McMahon uh, Legacy of Excellence Award, which was being presented to Stephanie. And once they did that, I was like, okay, the whole thing was a farce, uh, just done for storylines. And while I'm watching this segment play out, uh, I literally said... Wouldn't it be cool if Shane showed up? And I'll be damned if, like, 15 seconds later, here comes the money! And that hit, and the reaction that Shane got was insane, like, almost, like, godlike. You would have thought, like, the greatest wrestler of all time made his return, but um, Shane, to me, was always the most entertaining of the McMahon family. I mean, Stephanie has her moments where she's really good, and then other times where I want to ram a railroad spike into my skull rather than listen to her talk or her, watch her do anything. Vince McMahon goes through periods where sometimes he's great and other times he's a cure for insomnia or other times he's just so off the wall that he doesn't make sense. And um, so, you, you know, and then there's Linda McMahon who doesn't belong on TV at all. Uh, but Shane was always consistently entertaining. Uh, you know, whether yeah, I remember when he was a, co a color commentator for uh, Sunday Night Heat, uh, when Heat first started, like from the first few episodes. And I really liked him in that role, actually. And I, you know, some of the stuff he did with the European title and the hardcore title and um, some of the stuff he did with Big Show and uh, all sorts of things. I mean, Shane was always a really entertaining presence and worked hard. I mean, that match he had with Kurt at King of the Ring 2001 was one of the most insane matches I've ever watched. But um, obviously, right off the bat, Shane McMahon brought back a lot of excitement to Monday Night Raw and gave us something worth talking about. Uh, especially in terms of how things are shaping up for WrestleMania, because now um, Shane McMahon has expressed interest that he wants to take control of Monday Night Raw. He has implied that he has something over Vince, whatever that is. I'm sure we'll find out sooner or later. Um, and at WrestleMania, it's been decided that Shane McMahon will face The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match, and if Shane wins, he gets control of Monday Night Raw. 
Um, that is bonkers. I mean, when I fucking said that this WrestleMania was going to be one weird-ass, funky WrestleMania, I mean, that, that match right there is... I mean, nobody would have predicted that. I mean, of course, this is what happens when Sting and John Cena get hurt, too. But, um, you know, it, it's very intriguing. And it, it already, like, a lot, the wheels are turning in my head, and maybe I'm just putting more thought into it than it really deserves. But, um, you know, I mean, Shane's going to win at WrestleMania. Um, I don't doubt that at all. Because if he doesn't, what was the point in bringing him back? I mean, what, you bring him back for three, four weeks and then he just loses and goes away again? I mean, what's the point? I mean, I mean, I know Undertaker has a history of not putting guys over like Bray Wyatt or CM Punk when he was world champion in 2009 and shit like that, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, this whole scenario to me points to a lot of bells and whistles and fluky bullshit and all sorts of crazy things. Maybe Cena interferes and helps Shane win. I don't know. Uh, it's really interesting that they're really painting Undertaker as the heel in the whole situation, although they did that last year with the Lesnar matches. But um, in any case... Uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I fully expect Shane McMahon to win, and I'll talk about that more uh, when I do the WrestleMania 32 preview and predictions and talk about what the WWE, uh, what Raw should turn into post-WrestleMania once Shane takes over. But, um, you know, they have a chance to do something really cool there, and I'll uh, make those ideas uh, known when, uh, when I do my preview video. But... Um, in, in any case, I mean, for not if for nothing else, I mean, Shane McMahon's return was a huge spark of life to uh, Monday Night Raw, which has been mostly lifeless uh, the last few months or so. And you know, it also hurts when you you're missing big stars due to injury, and um, they're just uh, you know, I said, I mean, this WrestleMania was an opportunity to really just throw shit up against the wall and see what sticks, and um, and that's. That's something that's capturing people's attention. I mean, again, look at the response Shane got. It was insane. And um, we'll see how it all plays out at WrestleMania. But, I mean, really, I'm looking at the WrestleMania card now. You've got Shane and Undertaker and Hell in a Cell, which is intriguing. I'm not saying it's, like, the greatest match in the world, but it's intriguing. And I think there's some things they can do with it to make it worth something. I, um, so there's that match. Um, you have... Uh, Dean Ambrose versus Brock Lesnar in a No Holds Barred match, but that's the other thing that happened on Raw that was very good. I really like the way they shot the segment with uh, uh, Brock beating up Ambrose in the parking lot before the show. I thought that was really well done and really well handled and uh, captured more of that. It didn't look like a skit or like a poorly produced backstage segment. It looked like something that was happening in real time that got caught. Um... You know, it gave off the impression that the story continues before and after the shows take place. And I, I really liked that. I thought it was a nice touch. And uh, the, uh, that and the fact that Brock looked like he just brutalized the fuck out of him. So it, it looked real, too. Um, and that set up their No Holds Barred match for WrestleMania, which is actually a very interesting pairing. Of course, it looks like they've dropped the whole Brock and Bray Wyatt thing. Um, I mean, the Wyatts are jokes now. I mean, they, after losing at the February, uh, after they lost at Fastlane, I was like, yeah, they're. Can we stop pretending the Wyatts are a threat? They're just a. They're just a group of guys at this point. They're really not, really that menacing or threatening anymore. They're just a group of guys, like no different from like the New Day or Social Outcasts or any other fat League of Nations or anything like that. And and the Wyatts should be so much more, but. Based on the way they've been booked, they're not. And that's that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, the Ambrose-Lesnar pairing really intrigues me. And it's a nice little consolation prize for Ambrose, who I felt should have gotten the main event spot. Because I had it all in my head that Ambrose... And I knew they were going to do this. I didn't get my hopes up. And the main event to Fastlane, while a very cool match um, in how it was worked, um, Reigns winning was absolutely no surprise to me or anybody else. Uh, but I thought it's like, man, it'd be cool if Ambrose won, faced Triple H at WrestleMania, and then WrestleMania ends with Reigns turning heel and attacking Ambrose, and that starts your whole story. It fixes Reigns because it gives him a character development, new direction. It puts a, a fresh talent that people like in the in the big spot, and all sorts of other things like that. And um, but 
you know, if you can't put Ambrose in the main event, put him with Lesnar. I mean, that's a big spot right there. I mean, Lesnar's a big star, obviously, and a big, uh, big attraction. So um, Ambrose could definitely benefit from the attention that goes along with working with Lesnar. Um, and I think making it a no-holds-barred match opens the door for a lot of creativity and a lot of brutality. So I, I expect that, that that might be kind of the the show stealer, actually, um, if all the cards are played right. And, um, yeah, it's a cool match, and it's actually nice to see Brock Lesnar in a fresh match, because if he had worked with Triple H or Undertaker or Rock again and, you know, just keep going back to the same well of guys that he worked with, you know, 13 years ago, I would have just been like, uh, that's boring. And they're actually creating fresh matches with Brock Lesnar. So I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that, and I think... Um, um, I, I think it could be a really good match. Uh, then you look at other things that are going on in the card. I'm pretty sure the Intercontinental title match is going to be either Owens versus AJ, which is probably more likely at this point, or Owens versus Zayn, which is the one that I had cooked up and I, I would really like to see personally. But I'd be fine with either of those. Uh, the Divas title match looks like it's going to be Charlotte versus Sasha versus Becky, which um, I, I fully expect the number one contenders match next week to end in some kind of a, a double pin or, or some kind of a draw that results in both of them getting the title shot. But um, yeah, it's actually, they kind of bumblefuck their way into a good climax here where with all the mistakes they made with the Divas Revolution and all the fuck-ups along the way and the, you know, the repetitive tag matches and the staleness with the characters and some of the horrible segments they did, the Reed Flair exploitation stuff that they did and all that shit, um, they kind of got to a nice conclusion where the three girls that they brought in to save the Divas division are now in the top spot at WrestleMania. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty, it's pretty cool that you got to that point. It's a shame that the road was so bumpy, but okay, they got to a pretty good match uh, as the WrestleMania Climax match, and I'm perfectly fine with that. And I think it could be a really good match. If you watch them in NXT and you saw what they're capable of, um, you know, they they should be able to deliver something pretty good for WrestleMania. Um, so really, I mean, right now, WrestleMania is shaping up. It's like, you know what? Uh... With all the injuries and all the shit that happened and all the randomness going on, it's like they kind of, they kind of stumbled and bumbled and fucked around and kind of lucked their way into a halfway decent WrestleMania card. I'm sure AJ will play a big role on the card too. I'm not sure what that'll be. Maybe, maybe Jericho and AJ versus New Day for the tag titles. I, that would be fine. Uh, that would be at least something. Um, but yeah, it looks like WrestleMania is actually shaping up to be okay in spite of everything. Uh, the weakest part of the card <laughs> is the main event, which nobody cares about. I mean, it's like, you can see it. I've seen it happen. I, I saw it happen with Triple H and Cena back in 22, where, uh, you know, Triple H is supposed to be the unstoppable heel, like this big, unstoppable, unbeatable obstacle for the babyface, and nobody likes the babyface, <laughs> so the whole story doesn't work. I mean, Raw ended with Triple H beating the ever-living dog crap out of Roman Reigns and nobody felt sorry for him. Nobody felt any sympathy or empathy or anything for Roman Reigns. They just ch chanted, this is awesome and Triple H, Triple H and it's like, oh dear, this is a sign of what we're going to get at Mania where it's just like, you know, it's just going to be, Roman's going to win because fuck you, that's why and people are going to hate it because nobody gives a shit about Roman, and I'll admit a lot of that's not necessarily his fault, but, um, you know, he's just, he's just not working, he's just, people don't like the guy, it's just, uh, you know, they've kind of made up their minds on that one, so it's really kind of sad that it's like, of all, all the interesting things that you're at least trying to try at this WrestleMania, and that main event, you were just bound and determined to get Roman into that spot, and it's like, okay, and you, you had to, slap Triple H into that spot, too, so, yay, whatever, but, um, yeah, I, 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 WrestleMania is actually shaping up to be pretty interesting, like I said, if nothing else, it looks like it's gonna be a really freaky-ass, weird, fucking, bizarre WrestleMania, so, uh, definitely not like, uh, what you would, would have seen last year, or the year before that, a year before that, a year before that, so, uh, I guess I give them points for, you know, managing to Frankenstein something together and uh, make it at least somewhat moderately interesting. So uh, with that, uh, the road to WrestleMania continues. Uh, we'll know more as uh, the weeks go on. 
Uh, this weekend, is, you know, I'm going to be drugged out of my mind, too. So that's the other aspect I'm not looking forward to with the surgery because I hate being on meds. I just, I, I fucking hate it. But, um, you know, while I'm uh, pilled out of my mind, I'm going to try and watch Lucha Underground and NXT and, and even TNA. Uh, Ring of Honor 2, they're having their 14th, I believe their 14th anniversary pay-per-view is this weekend. So I'm going to try and check that out as well. But um, that is all I have for you now. Uh, again, you won't be seeing me for the next few days because of uh, what uh, you know, having my wisdom teeth pulled. But um, the next time you do see me, it will be with uh, the WrestleMania Best of Worst videos. It'll be the Intercontinental Title and the Tag Title videos. I plan on getting both of them up pretty soon, um, and uh, pretty close to each other as well. But uh, until then, that is all I have for you now. And uh, peace out, everybody. Enjoy your week. <laughs>